Hi guys, welcome back. Today is a deep dive on the Eastern Anatolian factions of RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. This is once again taken from a longer interview I did with Mausolos on the Anatolians and Thracians, so check that out in the description below and check out the unit videos for those areas as well. Now without further ado guys, enjoy. Pamphylia then, Pamphylia, which is around C day. Um, so over yeah. here, so again, very thick with Greek cities around this region. And we, uh, uh, we've we got another faction to the north, which we'll talk about a little bit here as well, I guess, uh, because it's very close. But Pamphylia isn't, an, uh, isn't a faction, it's just AOR. And they have the Pamphylian heavy javelin men. And um, yeah, so I've got a question here. Were the Pamphylians Greek or Hellenic in a lot of senses because they've got the heavy javelin men? Or, you know, were they, you know, very just just heavily Hellenized Anatolians, I guess? I, uh, probably the latter, even though there are already some myths in, in antiquity um, directly relating them to the Greeks, but they were just str probably they were just strongly Hellenized, just like the Carians, but mm. they had, um, you could say they had less of, of, um, of their own identity, maybe. They were stronger... Um, it was strongly Hellenized, and there was a bit of a lack of Pamphylian states. And as you can see, they fell under the Ptolemies. But um, again, uh, mercenaries and Ptolemaic service from Pamphylia are tested. And um, Herodotus says that some of them fought like hoplites, but mm. not completely like hoplites. Um, while other sources suggest they may have been Peltas, and hence we just mixed it into a heavy javelin min unit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. Uh, so nearby <laughs> right next to pamphylia we actually do have a faction that starts off with two settlements a bit spread out uh, away from each other um, and they of course have the aor units of the selgian slingers the pisidian javelin men the pisidian theroperoi and the etenian etenian uh hoplites uh, which is in Catena only um so yeah Really cool uh, little unit, uh, little faction here, the Selge. So, how come they start slightly separated? And uh, you know, what did they get up to then around this time? Um, so, Selge was a Pisidian city that, which also um, um, traced its roots back to Sparta. So, like the Pamphylians, there's certainly mm. a Greek connection. No one really knows if they were Greek or just Pisidian. It's yeah. really difficult to say. But um, in any case, um, we gave them Kratopolis, um, which is uh, Kratonpolis, which was probably founded by Cretan mercenaries. And um, there's there's mention um, of a war between the Selgians and their neighbors um, uh, from Petnelissos, which um, was at this time uh, allied with the uh, Seleucid usurper Achaios in the late third century BC. And the Selgians they besiege Petnelissos and they initially defeat the Seleucids, um, but uh, eventually, their army is destroyed and they lose up to 20,000 men, which gives you an impression of how big the Selgian army was. Is, that, Selgian, is that a Roman 20,000 men or is that a real 20,000 men? It, it, is, it, is, it is from Polybius, the lift. In okay, sense. okay, fair enough, yeah. He also says the Selgians brought bravely because they are Selgians. They apparently yeah. they actually like them. So, um, yeah, it's probably a reliable number. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to get a jab in at Rome. So I'm, so, I'm sorry, yeah, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Of course, in any case, they, they attack Celtic, Celt, the Seleucids and the Petnelicians. And at this point, the allies of the Celtians, they cannot help them anymore. So, um, yeah, since we couldn't find who would own Cretonpolis in this period, and since apparently after the defeat at Petnelicians and the, sea, at, at the siege of Celtic, the Celtian allies could not help them anymore, we thought maybe it was Cretonpolis which was controlled by them. Because as you can see on the map, it would make sense after being defeated at Petnelisos, they would go home and they cannot um, relieve yeah. Selja because Petnelisos is between them. And um, as for Selja itself, Strabo, the geographer in the time of Augustus, um, and another Greek, of course, from Pontus, um, he um, says about them, he was very impressed by, by Selja and his products. And um, I will just simply quote a bit of from the geography of Strabo. Yeah. Um, about the soldier and its its plane. 
The nature of the region is wonderful, for among the summits of the Taurus Mountains there is a country which can, support, which can support tens of thousands of inhabitants, and it is so very fertile that it is planted with the olive in many places, with fine vineyards, and produces abundant pasture for cattle of all kinds. And about this country all around lie forests of various kinds of, of timber. And then he speaks about the Tyrex, Styrex, Styrex tree, whatever, which they export. And um, da, 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 and the economy of the Selgians, and then he continues on Selge itself. The region around the city and the territory of the Selgians has only few approaches, since their territory is mountainous and full of precipices and ravines, which are formed, among other rivers, by the Eurymedon and the Castros, which flow, flow from the Selgic mountains and empty into the Pamphylian Sea. Because of their fortifications, the Selgians have never even once, either in earlier or later times, become subject to others, but unmolested have reaped the fruit of the whole country except the part situated below them in Pamphylia, which they were always at war with the kings, which is of course <laughs> the Seleucids <laughs> yeah. and the Ptolemies. But in their relation with the Romans, they occupied the part in question on certain stipulated conditions. So, um, as you can see, um, instead of conquering Selgia, um, the Romans is, uh, gave it to the Atalids after the Roman Seleucid War to Pergamon. But, um, yeah, um, the problem was that um, Pergamon wasn't really mighty militarily, and Selgia yeah. said, nope, we are not going <laughs> to accept serenity. So, they fought two wars against them, um, the Atalids, without much success. So, Selgia, as Strabo, who writes in the time of Augustus, um, tells us, um, they retained their independence, and then um, the Romans also saw that it was better to work together with the Selgians than to attack mm. their city, because it was really, as Strabo says, on a um, high plain surrounded by mountains, and you had only th two or three accesses to that, um, uh, how do you call it in English? Um, uh, plateau, I guess. Uh, I yeah, to the that. plateau, yeah, that's, that, that works. Yeah. yeah, plateau, yeah, you say plateau, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so you imagine it was a very difficult um, um, position to attack, and we've somewhat mm. represented that on the map because you cannot go there from the west, I think. And and that's how Celta survived. And even in Roman times, it, it retained its independence for a long time. And as Strabo says, it was even given the territory street stretching down to to the coast, apparently, by Augustus, I think. So probably Zillion, which you can see there. Yeah. And. Um, that's also why we have the Atenian hoplites, because they also appear, the, the guys from Cotena, which is sometimes called Atena, and sometimes it's Cotena. Mm. Um, Strabo and Polybius and these others, they just can't agree. <laughs> yeah. But, um, in any case, they sent their hoplites as well for the war against Selch. And that's why they're in as their own, uh, why they're owned by the Anatolian faction. So it can be simulated that Petnolisos and Cotena fought against Selch. Yeah. Selge. Cool. So, yeah, you can also see just, like, how big the Pisidian area is. Like, this is the northern point of the Pisidian area, Antiochia, uh, Pisidia. And it's just a massive area, isn't it? So, the whole, all the tribes from this area, the Pisidians. So, you will get a lot of access to AOR around here for the Pisidian Javelin Men and Theroperoi, if you want it, of course. If you want it. Completely up to you. Uh, whereas, Cotena is the only place where you can get the Atenian Hoplites, so quite a unique unit there as well. Um, so let's move on to Phrygia and the Lysiad dynasty, and I'm sure you've got a lot to say uh, about this one. Where are we going for this one? We're going north for this one, aren't we, I think? Yeah, we are going into Phrygia, which is um, yeah around here, uh, Dorylion and Persinus metropolis. That that is Phrygia. Of course, Phrygia used to be a very very large region before the, all these Thracians and Galatians would arrive, um, um, because Galatia is actually also part of Phrygia. Because obviously, before the Galatians came, um, it mm -hmm. wasn't Galatia. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's obvious, but yeah, something I said. <laughs> Lysiads, um, an interesting case because they are probably the least known Hellenistic kingdom, uh, based probably in Zunada or Dokimeion. They were founded by Lysias, probably a Seleucid general, when the Seleucids uh, somewhat lost control over the region in the late 3rd third third century BC. He, who had been um, an ambassador to Delphi in 248 BC, um, he um, claimed independence and he also fought against the Atalids when they um, were trying to regain, or to gain in the first place, the Seleucid yeah. territories in the area. And um, 
yeah, they survived for quite a while under his son uh, Philomelon, I think. They also founded several cities named after Lysias and Philomelon, <laughs> which yeah. are not on the map, not founded yet. <laughs> yeah. And he also had a father pro uh, called Philomelon, um, just like son. And um, so we have the older Philomelon and Lysias in the game, and they can spawn the factions if you do not pay attention as the Seleucids. And um, they existed at least until the mid second century BC, so for close to 100 years. Yeah. So in terms of the factions spawning, I believe they spawn at uh, Sinada and Doki Meon, like you said. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they'll, they'll spawn in there, which is pretty cool. Right slap bang in the middle of the Seleucids, uh, ready to fight them off. But they do have... Uh, a few different AOR units in this region as well. We've got the Phrygian Javelin Men, the Phrygian Spearmen, and the Phrygian Cavalry, which is pretty cool. Um, but oh, yeah, they, all of them are useless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't use them then, guys. <laughs> the Lysiads, <laughs> let the Lysiads uh, rebel, and then uh, and then they can use them. <laughs> That's what the Romans said. I'm just saying what the Romans said. Like <laughs> <laughs> One Roman general recruited Phrygians into his army to fight against Pontus, and after a few days of training, he thought they were so useless that he sent them home again and decided it would be better to fight with less men than to fight with Phrygians. <laughs> God. Now that, now that is really that they must have been, that is really bad. Imagine yeah. being like, I've got free soldiers, but I would rather not have them. Like literally, I'm going to a battle. And I'm going to get rid of men. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. dear me. Dear me. Should have got the Thinoi Clubman instead, shouldn't they, really? Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the uh, so the Lysiads have Seleucid units. I'm guessing that's mainly because they, they spawn out of Seleucia. Um, but is there any historical, like, other reasons behind that as well? Uh, this, behind the spawning of the Lysiads. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, this is a, I think it just happened when the Seleucids lost control over the area because we, we have him attested as, as his own king with his coins and fighting in the Atalids. And yeah, um, yeah that seemed, he wasn't under Seleucid control anymore. But this is also the period when Achaios, I think he was the half-brother of Antaios III, um, around 220 BC, when he claimed all of the Seleucid, uh, the Seleucid kingdom west of the Tauros. And... Um, yeah, so um, uh, there is a period of chaos uh, within yeah. the Seleucid uh, Empire, and Antiochus III will reclaim all these lost lands. So this is also the period of the war with, uh, when Archaeos fights against the Seljians and all yeah. that. So this is Antiochus I, isn't it, at this point, uh, for the Seleucids? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Two generations earlier, yeah. 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 Um, cool. So, funny, funnily enough, Antiochus III in my, uh, in my Seleucid campaign is... is um, a bit wayward as well <laughs> so uh, that's weird that's a very weird uh, parallel there i guess yeah 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 um so let's move on to iconion and where are we going for iconion uh, down here aren't we uh, so yeah laconia and isauria which is again just an aor area and it's quite a big area again if we have a look we've got laconia down here um, and then our Saurike Lyconia down here as well. So it's quite a decently chunked size region. Backs up against, of course, Pisidia. We've got more Lyconia here, more Lyconia. So lots of Lyconia and Isaura down here, Isauria. Um, yeah. And uh, these guys have some pretty cool units. Um, Isaurian Marauders. And I say pretty cool but just because their name's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, the marauders are, are coming to uh, to get people around this region. If you want to recruit them, you can do. And like I say, if you really want a deep dive on all these units, then you're going to have to check out the video that comes out tomorrow, uh, which will go into all these units, show them off, and you'll get to see the Thinoi Clubman, guys. You'll get to see Woo! the Thinoi Clubman. Yes, Woo! the boys. <laughs> Or, as I like to call them, the Fred Flintstones of the ancient world, ready to bash some heads in. So, that's pretty cool. So, on to Paphlagonia. And where are we going for Paphlagonia, then? Is that, is that down here? Uh, no. no, that's uh, that's Silesia, isn't it? Where are we going for Paphlagonia? North. North. Uh, you have to go north. 
And but yeah, it's is there. It's it's around Gangra. Oh yeah, Gangra, Gangra. Yeah, cool. Uh, over here. Yeah, it's an actual faction, isn't it? Ah, God. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Paphlagonia is actually the whole region and a bit more, which you can see in the yeah. screen. A big part of northern Anatolia. Uh, not that much is known about Paphl the Paphlagonians. However, they seems to have been a long-standing um, kingdom. Because Pulaimenes is already mentioned in, in the Iliad during the Trojan War as supporting the Trojans. And cool. then we hear about another Pilamenes in uh, 3rd century BC and then also in the time of the Romans. Mm. And there's another king, the only one who's not called Pilamenes, <laughs> yeah. in between in the 2nd century BC because he supports the Romans against the Galatians. But up until that point, um, Paphlagonia existed and um, it, that's all it did. And people didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> it was a bit of a backwater in the interior, like the kingdom of Paphlagonia did, because it, 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 it was restricted to the interior of the actual bigger region of Paphlagonia. Yeah. And the Paphlagonian peoples. But yeah, they just chilled there and survived <laughs> for yep. centuries and millennia, maybe, which mm. is kind of crazy. And that's why we thought, oh, that's such a such a weird faction that we want to have them in our IS because... That's why we get factions. They are weird, they are unique, <laughs> yeah. they are cool, and we want people to learn about them. Yeah. Uh, I love that slapdown. Paphlagonia, they pretty much did nothing and no one cares about them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I mean, I mean, they survived, and it, it, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a great thing because you have to imagine the Trojan War probably happened in, I don't know, I mean, nowadays it's, it's hard to say, but we used to think in 1200 BC, and they're still an independent, like, more or less independent, because most yeah. of the time they probably acknowledged greater powers. That's where well, that was one way of getting away with mm. it. Um, there, there was still an independent kingdom in the first century AD when most of Asia Minor was under Roman control. Yeah. And the Paphlagonians still have their own kings. So um, that's amazing after. Yeah, and we don't know how, uh, how long the kingdom existed before the Trojan War. So the, it could have been there for one and a half thousand years. Yeah, wow. And, Never, never ever did they have the idea of expanding the territory. No, <laughs> no they were just chilling, bro. They were just chilling. Yeah. I mean, too many times these cities have gone, as we've seen over the last uh, the, of the, the, the these couple of episodes, too many times these cities have pushed their luck and then ended up just getting burnt to the ground. So I, I respect that. I respect just chilling and, and not poking any, poking any, uh, any uh, bees, <laughs> uh, any bees poking any bees yeah. i can't speak <laughs> not poking any bears <laughs> i don't know what i'm speaking about also i'm really annoyed that literally i remembered where every single place is and i've i've forgotten on the second to last one god damn it but anyway wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally every single place i remembered where it was and then we get to paphlagonia and suddenly pfft, my memory goes instantly but they do have some AOR units, and that I do know. They've got the Paphlagonian Cavalry, the Paphlagonian uh, Javelin Men, uh, the Mariandinian Javelin Men, and the Mariandinian Infantry. So where is the Mariandinians? Where are the Mariandinians from? Uh, are they from uh, this region of Paphlagonia, or is there a, a separate region that they, uh, that they enjoy? Or is it the larger name for the region? Um, so the Mariandinians, we, I believe we already talked about them in the last video. They are yeah. actually uh, uh, located around Heraclea, Pontique, mostly. Yeah. You can see that their region is called ah, the yeah. Mariandinian. And these were the people, Posidonius, the Greek philosopher, said were too stupid to live on their own, so they needed the Heracleotes <laughs> to enslave them and take care of them. <laughs> God. <laughs> but, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of stretch uh, of land between a settlement, uh, without a settlement between Heraclea and Gangra. Mm. So um, um, it, 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 it was plausible enough to also give the Marandinians to them. Yeah. And the infantry, the Malay infantry unit, is actually not the Marandinians, but it's the Man. No, I, I used to believe it was the Mandinians, but I think that name is wrong as well. <laughs> yeah. And um, we had to rename them once more, and I think they're now called Mustianian Infantry, after I, I checked the inscription. And yeah. the Mustianians, they actually appear at the end of the Atalid Kingdom of Pergamon, because they were a group of mercenaries, and the last king upon his death, in his last will, he, he writes that they should become citizens of Pergamon. Um, so these were, were an elite uh, mercenary unit within the Atalid Kingdom, hired from Paphlagonia, 
And um, hence, they are basically a stronger version of the Mariandinians and the Paphlagonian Javelin Men. Yeah. Cool. Nice. So, yeah, interesting. Where exactly they are from, uh, I do not know, and no one probably knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, probably no one will ever know, to be fair, as well. Yeah. Um, oh, well, possible, yeah. So let's go on to our second to last one, or our, our last sort of unique one. And uh, we'll go to... Oh, well, we're all, <laughs> we're all the way going towards Babylon. I, I just had the Seleucid itch once again. I, I wanted to go to <laughs> Seleucia, but... Um, yeah, let's go to Silesia then, around Tarsos over here. And uh, if you've played vanilla a bit, you will have seen the Silesian pirates as a uh, mercenary option a lot of the time around this region. And that is because they are here. They are an emergent faction, and it's in this area around Tarsos. And you can see Kalikia, there we are, Silesia and Messe Kalikia, uh, the names of these regions as well. Uh, so Silesia... Did Vanilla get it right by making them into a pirate unit, or or were they a little bit more than that? Um, so, um, yeah, of, co of course, the original idea for them um, comes from the pirates, no doubt. And Mosca Flaka really wanted them in because he just liked the idea of having a pirate faction. Yeah. But now we have the Calicians, uh, Cilicians, or whatever, um, who represent the whole culture and region as well. So, um,. Basically, um, they can um, uh, represent any kind of revolt in the area. Yeah. And, and um, sorry, uh, the Cilicians, Calicians, Calicians, I would say, I would just stick to Calicians, it sounds more Greek. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Calicians, they, um, they are, again, um, a very strongly distinguishable uh, ethnic group throughout the ages. And, yeah. Um, um, yeah, they, they were, of course, also under the Persian Empire. And as you can see, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies fought over the region and some people will maybe know the the armenian kingdom in cilicia in from the middle ages from many medieval sort of war mots mm. so even the middle ages was still an important region and i think it's still sometimes called cilicia today because tarsos is still a major city in turkey yeah and of course the major city in in this region um but in antiquity um i think alexander the uh, of course uh, he conquered it and um they are, of course, yeah, mainly there as a faction, however, because of the pirates, because in the in the time of, uh, uh, during the Pontic Wars, Mithridates the Great of Pontus, he activated them, so to say, the Cretan pirates, the Cilician pirates, others, to, to raid the Romans. Yeah. And to be fair, they had earlier used it themselves, the Romans, which is often ignored. They had also, um, yeah, pushed these... Uh, the piracy forwards to weaken the Seleucid Empire, but then when the Pontic's, uh, uh, Pontic king Mithridates turned it on the Romans, then and they soon became a huge issue for the Romans as well. And of, and of course, there are reports that they ventured as far as Italy and the Western provinces, and they yeah. became a huge threat. And then Pompey received his extraordinary command to um, to defeat them. And even though he was very successful in doing so, and he settled some of them in the Cilician towns, which thus became um, clients of Pompey, his loyal followers. Mm. Um, at the same time, this is probably also the end of the Republic, because the extraordinary command given to Pompey gives him the, the, the power to use all forces, all Roman forces, all across the Mediterranean. And this is the first step to the Empire, really, when um, you would eventually have an emperor who has unlimited power. Yeah. And um, this decision to make give Pompey this position is is really the first step in that direction, or uh, it could be seen as the first, maybe it's the second or third. But it's a decisive step in that direction, and this gives that alone gives the Calicians a big influence in history. And um, yeah. they were famous raiders and pirates throughout the Hellenistic period, really. And that's why we also added the units. And um, it's a very mixed unit, of course, the Calician pirates, because everyone armed uh, armed themselves, obviously. Yeah. And not state funded or anything um some of them have no armor some have better weapons some have helmets some have not um some have some have that that kind of shield or that kind of shield maybe uh, i'm not sure about the shield actually but yeah, yeah. they're very mixed unit and i think a uh, pretty cool unit and that'll be a pretty cool faction and of course they'll spawn whenever you you don't expect it and they will <laughs> raid you and yeah <laughs> you. yeah nice um so yeah, they as you say they've got the. Uh, uh, I'll I'll leave you to do the Greek pronunciation. I'll do my uh, butchering yeah. of pronunciation in English. So uh, it's the Silesian pirates. 
and the Silesian Spearman as well as another unit. Uh, so I think that actually does conclude apart from the final, uh, the final ones, and that'll be the Anatolians here, the generic Anatolians. Like we said, we've got the generic Thracians, and we've also got the generic Anatolians as well. And I thought it'd be best if we look on the tactical map, so we can actually pick out their colour and have a look at their colour on the map and see what uh, see what regions they have. But again, um, the thinking behind this, I'm guessing, is to uh, offer a cultural generic that kind of fits in and. Um, uh, you know, reduces the amount of uh, rebel settlements. And as you can see, like, look at Anatolia, guys. Like, everyone at home, I know we've done a map showcase and stuff, but all the way up to Pontus, there's pretty much no rebel settlements. There's a couple, but there's pretty much none, and that's because of this. And look at Greece as well. Like, how many rebel settlements do you see? Like, hardly any. And then even going up to Thrace, hardly any. And this is what they're trying to do with the map, and I expand it to... The whole map being like that at some point. Uh, but obviously, this is the Greek update. So that is why you have the Thracian Greeks and the Anatolians in there. Um, so yeah, we can see the purple color in here. This is the uh, Anatolians, the standard Anatolians. They're predominantly down south, down here, in the mountain sort of provinces, as we can see. Uh, they do have that one uh, province on the coast there. That's Priene. And then I think they've got this one up here. Yes, they do have that one. That's Sinope. And they've got one down in the middle, Sagaris, as well. So another generic faction. And they will have, you know, the sort of generic um, Anatolian roster with them as well. But just there to fill out the gaps so that there's a lot less rebel settlements. And I think it's, it's really, really cool uh, that that's been done there. So very there's nice. One I should add, though. Um, there's not really a generic Anatolian roster, because even though we have them as a faction to represent different um, cities yeah. and tribes, um, they are, of course, all very different, as we've seen. So um, they will mainly be recruiting um, AOR units, so um, we would tire mm. to different regions, so and to make sure that they mainly recruit uh, whatever fits to the region, and some of them also get Greek units, um, because it makes sense, especially for the Hellenized ones. And um, as I said in the beginning, we, of course, pick the ones which made somewhat sense from um, uh, the perspective of perspective of how powerful were they uh, or act, did they act together and do they appear in some wars like yeah Medellisos and um, uh, what's the other one um, um, Atena or Cortena or whatever did and, yeah. Um, yeah but yeah just an addition just a small correction but yeah no worries um, the you are obviously, obviously right that we want to represent as much of the map um, without just rebels as possible, but there's still rebels to to split it up somewhat. And um, yeah, the same is true for Greece. And I think we're really happy with the outcome. And of course, we we included the Thracians and the Anatolians in this update because they're really an integral part of the Greek world. Mm. Um, I mean, ge geographically alone, you can already see that is the case. Yeah. Really. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, very nice indeed. And again, like we've said about Greece. You know, uh, the Thracian area is going to be a big battle royale, like we've said. And also, you know, you can get in on the action of the battle royale in Greece. And Anatolia, I mean, a very interesting battle royale going on here. You know, you've got two massive empires, not just big empires, absolutely huge empires. Honestly, if you're playing them, like the Ptolemies, in my opinion, is the strongest nation in the game. Uh, apart from Rome, probably, but... I don't like saying that, but yeah, no. uh, Ptolemy's probably the uh, the strongest nation in the game, to be honest. Um, so you've got them, you've got the Seleucids, which they start off with a decent-ish army, but uh, they are quite weak in this region because it's so far from their capital, and um, you know they're surrounded by so many enemies that the Seleucids can really be gobbled up very quickly. You've got Celts in this region, you've got the Galatians, and remember guys, Celts have very strong rosters. So another really hard challenge for everyone in this region. Mixed in with the Greek cities we all talked about last time, all down the coast, as well as Pergamon as well. Rhodes can get in on the action in this area as well. Um, and then, on top of that, you've got the Anatolian factions now. So really a mix of cultures and uh, a mix of different, you know, origin stories uh, how old and new they are to this region. You know, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies a little bit newer than some of these sort of single states that we've seen today. 
um, that have a claim and have had a claim there for, you know, I mean, even we said about Gangra, like maybe 1,000 years, 1,500 years at this point, uh, compared to the Galatians, the Seleucids and the Ptolemies who are newcomers uh, to this region, relatively speaking. Uh, but yeah, it's just really cool to see. And honestly, guys, it plays fantastic from my, uh, from my playthroughs um, in Greece and Anatolia. Like I said, I've played quite a bit of Bithynia, and that is really fun. Uh, would recommend. Really, really fun. Uh, so yeah, I think that's everything, unless there's anything else you want to add, Malzlos. No, I think, I think we've said everything, and we hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll, you'll be back soon, because there's a lot of more... A lot more IS content coming up, even though most of it is going to be without me. <laughs> but it will be sad. with Red Z, and it will also be with a certain Japanese villain. <laughs> <laughs> what, Mr. Cherry? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, don't call him a villain. He'll he'll uh, you know he'll uh, he'll get upset and make me make more videos tonight. <laughs> oh no! You see it now. He's killing me. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. But anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you very, very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks once again to Mazlos for both of these videos. Honestly, the breadth and the depth of knowledge is quite astonishing, to be honest. I've learned so much during this. I hope you guys have too, as well. Uh, I mean, if you knew all that, then you must also be an ancient history expert and historian as well. So, honestly, I can't see anyone out there not having learned an absolute ton from those videos. So, thank you very much, Malzlos. It really has been a pleasure. Efkaristo, which means thank you in Greece. Yeah. <laughs> in Greece. <laughs> uh, more than Greek. Uh, hence is it Greece. Um, yeah, thank you very much to, to hosting me and having me once again. And... Again, thanks to everyone watching the video, and um, yeah, you should all look forward to the release of RIS, and now the debate starts, which is the best faction, which one do you want to play, and <laughs> who should conquer Asia Minor? <laughs> if the answer is not the Seleucids, then you're wrong. Um, but no, no I'm joking. Yeah, no, I'm joking. I, well, I, yeah, I want to play as uh, as uh, older. Uh, and a, and a, not Anatolian, sorry. Gangra, where's Gangra? G Gangra. And just chill. Yeah, Paphlagonia, like you say. Just yeah. chill. Again, I didn't realize where they were. Uh, maybe I've got a mental... Maybe they were so chill that they're like camouflage. They don't... They're not even like... They're not even... I think that was the idea, to be honest. Yeah. They've just got a little hill. They put like nets over it so no one can see it. And then they just all get, uh, get there and, uh, and just chill out. And are like, we're not going to attack anyone, bro. Uh, we're just going to calm down. Playing yeah, tall as Gangra. That's that's your challenge, guys. <laughs> Playing tall as Gangra. You just have to start as Gangra, finish as Gangra, no expansion, and see whether you become the richest nation yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, Please, we want to see a screenshot of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, good luck. I don't think you'll become the richest nation in the world. Spoiler, uh, but yeah. <laughs> you, ne you never know. The gold is flowing in Gangra. That's why uh, they hid out in the hills for so long, because they had so much gold flowing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Maybe Midas visited them and, and touched every building. <laughs> well, that's why they were so quiet. Maybe Midas ac accidentally touched, like, nearly everyone. And there was only yeah, a few yeah. people left. And they were just like, well, this is pretty terrible. We've lost all our friends. But now we have a lot of gold and we don't want anyone to know. So, uh, you know, they started burying all the bodies. Uh, gold bodies. I don't know what I'm saying right now, honestly. <laughs> I really don't know, because gold, which you do not sell, is not really worth anything, is it? Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, but they no, they were they were hiding out. You know, that's why they chilled out, though. They were hiding out in case the raiders came. They were worried about the yeah. Galatians and the Thracians, because, you know, as, as we've talked about, the Greeks framed the Thracians as being very, very violent and uh, raiding all the time. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, they were just worried. They were very, they were very worried about uh, about people coming. That's why they hid their gold, of course. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> let's ignore that conversation. And uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Make sure you do like and subscribe. Um, that would be fantastic. Stay tuned for more RAS Weekends content coming out tomorrow and next week. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video. <laughs>